friend, this is a Jinjo tradition. Will you make a wish with us? Greetings, everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at the magistrate of Jinzo herself, our little Noel at home, Jinsi. As Sentinel Jue's chosen, Jinsi is a very special resonator. In battle, she utilized the spectro element and a broad blade to devastating effects. Before we get into her skills, let's quickly go over the core mechanic of her kit, her Luminal Synthesis Forte. The first ability provided by her forte is the Incarnation. After taking the field via her intro skill, landing the fourth sequence of her basic attack, or activating the alternate version of her resonance skill, Jinsi will enter the Incarnation state. While in this state, Jinsi's basic attack, heavy attack, dodge skill, dodge counter, and resonance skill will all change into their Incarnation forms and becomes castable while airborne. In addition, Jinsi gains access to her unison ability. This ability allows her to activate her outro skill and an ally's intro skill without consuming their concerto gauge. Lastly, Eris in Unity allows her ally's elemental damage to accumulate one stacks of incandescent for Jinsi. Damage from coordinated attacks will generate two stacks. Keep this in mind when considering teammates but damage from the same element can only accumulate one stack every three seconds. These stacks are consumed to further increase the damage dealt by the final form of her resonance skill Illuminous. A maximum of 50 incandescent stacks can be held at any time. Her basic attack slash of Breaking Dawn have four sequences and will generate a set amount of incandescent on hits. In addition, casting the fourth sequence will change her resonance skill into its variant form briefly. Her base heavy attack deals spectro damage and knockback lightweight enemies. The dodge counter deals spectro damage and will group up nearby targets. Her base midair attack deals spectro damage and has no intrinsic effects. While in the incarnation state, her basic attacks will change into their incarnation forms and become usable while airborne. In addition, performing another actions will not interrupt her attack sequence. Her incarnation heavy attack while airborne will slam down her heavy blade, send out a light shockwave and knock back nearby targets. Her incarnation counter attack allows her to advance forward at great speed and detonate a blast of spectro energy at the nearest target to her. Her resonance skill. Trailing Lights of Eons has four variations. In its base form, it allows her to quickly advance forward, delivering multiple strikes against the locked-on target. Its second form can only be cast after her intro skill was activated, or the fourth sequence of her basic attack is used, granting her overflowing radiance, which can be cast while on the ground or while airborne. Its third form, Crescent Divinity, becomes available right after overflowing radiance was cast and allows her to quickly advance forward phasing through the locked on target. After which a dragon will burst from beneath them, sending them airborne. Its final form, a luminous epiphany, can only be activated after casting the fourth sequence of her basic attack while in ordination glow and will summon a dragon to blast the surrounding foes with a solar flare dealing massive spectro damage. In addition, if she is in possession of incandescent stacks, they are consumed to further increase the damage dealt by the blast. After a luminous epiphany is cast, she gains unison, which as a reminder, allows her to trigger her outro skill and a teammate's intro skill without consuming their concerto energy. Unison can only be triggered once every 25 seconds. Her resonance liberation purge of light unleashes the full might of the spectro dragon, dealing massive spectro damage to the surrounding targets. Her intro skill looms halo, allows her to swiftly enter the fray in her incarnation state, dealing spectro damage to the nearby foes. In addition, this skill damage is increased by an additional 50% thanks to her converged flash passive. As for her second passive's radiant surge, it increases her spectro damage bonus by 20%, buffing pretty much her entire kit. For skill priority, you'll want to upgrade the Forte circuit, resonance liberation, resonance skill, basic attack, than intro skill. Because my guides are mostly geared towards free-to-play players, I won't linger too long on her resonance chains. C1 do look good, but remember to snipe her weapon before anything else.
Now that we have a better understanding of her kit, let's formulate a game plan. Most of her damage will be coming from the fourth variant of her resonance skill. In order to trigger this ability, we have to weave together her skill and her basics, as well as making use of her intro skill. To achieve this, here is the rotation I like to use. Begin your rotation on your team-wide buffer or on your direct buffer. Activate their respective buffs and intro skill into Jintzy. From here, activate her echo skill, followed by skill. Skill, basic attack four times. Into liberation, if it is available. Finally, finish things off with your fully amped Illuminous Epiphany final skill. This rotation will allow you to make use of the buff and dot effect from your echo skill. From here, swap back to your buffers. Rinse and repeat. Although the first rotation won't grant that 50 stacks of incandescent, subsequent rotations will, assuming you are running Yinlin or Mortify. As for weapons, her signature Ages of Harvest is going to be her best in slot to no one's surprised, I am sure. This weapon will grant its wielder a 12% bonus damage to all elements, and up to 48% bonus skill damage once both of its passive are active. Of course, it has a crit rate main stat making it much easier to build her. Get it if you can, cope if you can't. Verdant Summit is also a solid choice, but no shot you have this weapon and somehow don't have Jian, right? Lustrous Razor is going to be her best free-to-play option. And yes, this is a free-to-play option since we all have the opportunity to get this weapon at Union Level 45. Although it doesn't have a sexy crit rate substat, it does have very high attack values, grants 12.8% boost to energy recharge and up to 21% boost to your liberation damage. For four stars, the Battle Pass weapon Otham Trace is a fairly competitive choice providing a crit rate substat and up to 20% bonus attack at max stacks. Helios Cleaver is also a great option and complements her skill heavy kit quite well. If you're straight up poor, the three-star Broadblade of Night is a solid placeholder. So slap it on until you get lucky with something better. When it comes to Sonata effects, we're gonna want the five-piece Celestial Light with the new Calamity Ju A Echo as our main Echo. The two-piece will of course increase Spectro damage by 10%, and the full set will increase Spectro damage by another 30% after the intro skill is cast. Our Echo ability will deal decent AoE Spectro damage, but more importantly, it can be cast while airborne and will grant the equipped Resonator a stack of Blessing of Time every six seconds. When a Resonance skill is used, a stack is consumed to deal AoE Spectro damage to the surrounding targets. In addition, enemies hit will take damage over time for six seconds. This effect can stack up to three times and is considered as resonant skill damage. Alternatively, five-piece lingering tunes is a serviceable option. The set is fairly universal, meaning if you're starving for gear, you can swap it back and forth between your characters, regardless of their elements. The two-piece will increase attack by 10%, while the full set will increase attack by up to 20%. In addition, the damage dealt by your outrow skill is increased by 60%. For your four-cost echo, you'll want a crit rate or crit damage main stat depending on your need. For your three-cost, spectro damage and attack. Attack for the one-cost. With crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, resonance skill damage, attack percent and resonance liberation damage for your substats. When it comes to teammates, three units really stands out from amongst the rest. They are Yinlin, Mortify, and Yuanwu. Jinxi relies heavily on her teammates to generate incandescent stacks, and all of these resonators are capable of achieving this while remaining off field. And because their ability are considered as coordinated attacks, they can generate incandescent at a much higher interval than most. If you don't have access to those three, Tao Chi is a viable option providing a 38% resonance skill damage, deepen with her outro skill, but she will be a lot less effective at generating incandescent, as the others mentioned before. For your last slot, Verena is always a go-to and is even more valuable to Jinshi, as she too can generate incandescent stacks while she is off-field. In closing, Jinxi is an extremely powerful resonator and lives up to her title as Jinjo's magistrate,
she's a display of refined beauty that captivates the eye and commands respect.